So let me introduce myself. I am Milton Berman. I am technological coordinator at BD Project. Um, I am an informatics engineer of the Buenos Aires University here in Argentina. I have been working for more than 10 years in software companies. I, I worked in big corporations and then moved to small video game startups. And now I'm here uh, at this project, DD project, and that's why we are talking about here. I will let you know about the project right now. Um, it is called DD, Digital Identity for Inclusion. <coughs> and it's executed by a Bitcoin Argentina NGO. And it is supported mainly by BitLab or IDB Lab. It's the Inter-American Development Bank. Uh, it's a lab division. They are funding uh, almost half of, of the budget uh, we need for the project. And we also have uh, supporters such as uh, RSK, uh, Accenture, and Wiglow Capital. And to let you know a little bit about the Bitcoin Argentina NGO, um, it is a nonprofit organization here in Argentina, and it's uh, for more than five or six years, it's uh, uh, bringing the decentralized ecosystem to life here. It, uh, it's letting know everyone that uh, blockchain and Bitcoin uh, came here to stay. And they do this uh, with meetups, uh, trainings, uh, with uh, courses, um, with, well, uh, joining all the technical enthusiasts and also uh, governments and companies to let know these new decentralized technologies. So, and also, well, the NGO uh, supports many projects such as this one, DD. So, let's uh, talk about the project. Uh, we are uh, the context for this project and why why it is uh, it, it is uh, developing. We are developing it. Uh, we are talking about the informal neighborhoods. There are many of them here in Argentina, Latin America, all around the world. Uh, and they have a specific context that, that brought us to, to try to improve the situation. For example, in many of these, of these places, uh, people doesn't have uh, no land or property titles, uh, almost no access to formal and financial services lack of formal identity outside the town, higher bar barriers to get a job, and uh, all those things that you can see in the, in the, in the slide uh, have to do with something, with a concept uh, that is known as a poverty penalty, that uh, for people that live in this kind of, of, of situation uh, have to pay higher costs to eat, to get uh, access to services, uh, to get uh, to save money to get credits and also uh, it's more difficult to get jobs and one of the main reasons is that um, the the companies the, the the financial institutions the government um, and also private companies uh, it's too expensive and too difficult for them to gather uh, information and to know uh, about uh, the people in this population because uh, of lack of formal uh, documentation. And so this institution don't bother and don't get this information. And these people are excluded from the system from scratch. So with this, with our project, we try to improve this situation and with uh, also respecting the privacy of, of the people that is main score for us so especially we are our project will be developed uh, um, uh, its first MVP will be tested in a town here that is called Barrio Padre Mujica here in Buenos Aires um, that is uh, it's a, a great uh, town with informal neighborhoods such as the one I was talking to you about and it has uh, 43,000 uh, uh, population. Um, almost 44% of them are totally excluded for, from the financial system. Three out of five does not have a bank account and 
four out of five does not ha have access to financiation. So our main objective is this. I will read it because it's too long, but uh, I will learn it someday to develop a private and portable digital identity that certifies our data and validates our interactions to enable a naturally inclusive and decentralized social and economic system. Uh, so this, that's what we, we are going to build and to, to try to improve these this problems uh, I talked to you. And the project has many components. The, one of the main ones uh, is the education and research. This project will, will develop papers, will uh, we'll do training courses, will try not to also promote uh, um, and give our thoughts and, and our outcomes of the project, and all, but also to improve the, the blockchain and decentralized technologies ecosystem here in Argentina. Uh, so this is one of the main components. And also the other component there is the development of the app. This is the, the most interesting one and why we are talking here with you. Uh, we are going to develop a, an app. Uh, we are uh, we have it uh, designed and we are starting to develop it right now. I will show you a little bit of it. If the connection is good, let me know if you can see it is loading right now. This is the yeah, it looks like it's loading. Okay, okay. Well, here you can see, uh, up here. This, uh, this is the app that we are developing. It will have uh, two main modules. One module will be uh, your profile uh, and your credentials, um, any, any data, uh, any personal data that you will be gathering uh, using uh, the app. It will be in this module. And also, it will have a, a like a wallet uh, module where you will uh, be able to manage um, pesos uh, that are uh, represented in blockchain technology. Talking about the this first module, the one uh, that has to do with the identity, uh, you will have many certifications that you will be able to share to uh, whoever you want, to authorities, to banks to colleagues to your possible employer and you may have uh, things such as uh, your document in uh, digital your digital identity here you will be verified by by systems that that do kyc so you can um, show who you are if you want to the to anyone also you will be able to have a like a certifications or of titles, uh, for example, university titles or college uh, or school uh, academic uh, titles. And, and you also will be able to have informal courses or informal training titles here. That's the interesting part because uh, in these towns, there, there are many NGOs and, and nonprofit that give uh, training to, to the people, but uh, they cannot show uh, that this uh, that that he that they have done this this kind of training. We are going to gather this information in the app. And the interesting part is that uh, you will be able to show to show it to whomever you want, or whomever you need, whenever you want, only if you want. But you will be sure that the person that reads that information will trust that the. Uh, person that issued that information or the person or the institution uh, is, a, is a real one and you have not faked your profile. Um, so well, this is the part of identity and then it is the part of the wallet that um, the, the intention here is that uh, the, this population to move to a digital, uh, to, to, to manage digital money that is really difficult for them, for the causes I told you before, that 
uh, well, the bank uh, doesn't want uh, to have people that doesn't have a, a house uh, represented legally or that who doesn't have some kind of documentation or a credit history. So it is really difficult for, for this population to access to have access to digital money or digital financial services because of these high barriers. So we will lower that barriers and we will uh, let uh, the users of the app to to put change uh, a physical pesos bill in the specific kiosks in the in the town, and they will receive in exchange uh, this uh, peso token. Is the, uh, peso is the national currency here. That it will be uh, pegged one uh, one to one. As it will be like a stable coin, but the collateral will be in custodian bank uh, so the people can make cash in or cash out whenever they want and when they they, they use the digital currency they have the benefits of, of the well it's a little bit more secure to save money in digital than having below your mattress and then you also will have a, a, the possibility to pay for services here you will be able to to charge the, the SUBE car, that is the one you use to, for transportation in Argentina. Uh, also, you will have savings uh, goals, uh, that is for financial education. Uh, you can charge your cell phone and many other services that uh, will be enabled by, by this part of the app. And also, there is a, I will show you a little bit, there is a, something called the Ronda, it has many names across Latin America and around the world. That is uh, like a it's more like a credit uh, system uh, that is used uh, when in informal uh, communities uh, when they have access to banking systems, and that's where you uh, a couple of persons can join this ronda and they can start. They all will put like a specific amount of money every week or every month or whenever they decide. And everyone will put all the money once, uh, once a week or whatever. And there will be like a, how do you say, uh, like a lottery to, to know how, who will get all the money every week or every month. Um, so the first one will be like, almost like getting a credit and the last one will be like a savings uh, account. So we will enable this system in, in our app uh, that oh, it is always done in, in like <coughs> with physical bills and there is one person normally that gathers all the money and it has many risks. Uh, it's very difficult. So this is one of our services. And this is important because uh, this will be added to your digital identity um, and then you can show uh, okay I have not been uh, working in, I have not get a credit history from the banks but you can show you can realize here because of this app and blockchain technology and the decentralized identity platform you can know that I have been participating in many rondas and I have never missed a payment and I don't owe money to anyone and I haven't got a claim. So maybe uh, the people with this information that is from informal information, you may say, uh, you could know that this person is to be trusted and he could uh, also be uh, get better conditions when accessing to financial credits. So this is one of the main goals of of our app. Um, so, well, this talking about the app. Now, uh, regarding the technology, our technology will be, will be fully open source. Uh, everything will be open source. Um, it will be, we will have an SSI uh, platform. SSI is a new concept called self sovereign identity that is. Uh, it's a new wave of digital identity that has uh, that is not centralized 
and where you as a person have the possibility to gather all, all your data, all your digital data, and make a, whatever you want with it. You, you, you will be the first that will have your digital data, and then you will, be, you will uh, share it if you want to whomever you want. Uh, you will not be, uh, your data won't be in third party services and won't be, uh, it won't be possible for it to be uh, used by other people that you haven't allowed. This is this kind of technology uh, that it's really new. There, last year were the first use cases, maybe 2017, so it's new and we, we, we want to test it and new standards have been developed about that. And, and we will use a, a technology that is called Uport for this. There are many others. Uh, another important one, interesting, is Sovereign. But uh, as we will develop our solution in a solidity compatible platform, we, we will use Uport. That is great. Uh, also, the tokens will be. Uh, I don't know if you know about this uh, this standard, the ERC20. That most of the tokens that have been been made in in Ethereum platform and compatible platform have been this standard or, or deri derivates of this. We will use it for for this crypto peso or peso token I told you about. And also, we whenever we will use uh, blockchains for these uh, tokens and also for the SSI platform. And um, something important for us here at Bitcoin NGO is to use open platforms because uh, nowadays they are, uh, the first one was Bitcoin and it was permissionless and everyone could use it and can still use it. But then uh, new blockchain platforms have been, been developed and some of them are, are also public and other are permission public or others are private. And now are many flavors of blockchain, but we think that the real difference are will be made by uh, this public and permissionless blockchain. Uh, so uh, we will uh, be compatible first with this kind of this kind of blockchains, such as RSK and Ethereum. There are others also. Um, we could also be compatible with with other kinds of blockchain, or private or, or permission public blockchains. But but the for sure, we will have first the, the open ones, uh, and we want this solution to, to work on them. And also, it will be the, the first prototype and the first MVP will be developed for Android platform. Um, here, the population almost in this kind of, uh, of town where we're going to, to deploy the, the app. Almost more than 70% of the population has a smartphone, and 100% of them have Android smartphone. Smartphone, so we will develop for this platform. Also, in Argentina is the most popular one. Uh, maybe in, in the future we could do an iOS app, but but not at this time. So, well, uh, I don't know, Jeff, if we are okay with time or we are. Yes. Yeah, we're good. Up? We're good. Okay. Uh, I can let you know a little bit of these SSI platforms, of this, uh, this a little bit more technical. Um, so, so you can understand more uh, what is this about. Yeah, it'd be great. Uh, so, great. So this platform, uh, the main, uh, this is like a data relationship diagram of this kind of platform. And the main, uh, the main data model is the credential. This credential is uh, what someone uh, or uh, a person or enti uh, an entity, public or private, this, is, this credential is what this issuer uh, says about a person, an identity. So this could be the government issuing a credential that says, well, this is, I am enabled to drive here in Argentina, uh, like a license uh, to, to drive, a driver's license. Uh, and also it could be like a university uh, title and could also be me saying that Jeff is a great person 
uh, or also could be me saying that I am supporting a special football club. Uh, it could be whatever you want. The important thing is uh, that it has one issuer, it has one uh, receiver of the, of the credential, or, or one owner, sorry, and the, the statement. Um, the most important part here is that the issuer will be, will be distinguishable, identified, because uh, there will be a record uh, of these issuers that are on blockchain. Uh, they will have to create an identity on blockchain, so to become an issuer, and you will these issuers will show their their private their public keys to the world, and they will sign this credential cryptographically with this uh, with their private key, and then you can check that it has an, that it belongs to them because the public key is available for every, everyone, and also this credential uh, as they are. Uh, digital design, you can know that it, they have not been modified by anyone and that this uh, data to be uh, believed that is true and verified. Uh, so the credentials are really important. Um, and then you have this, um, this part that is in blockchain, as I was telling you, that is uh, the issuers, uh, the public identity of the issuers of credentials, that, as I told you, could be anyone. Um, also the credential format such, uh, I don't know if I'm a, a university, uh, the format of my title credential would be like, well, this is the name of the title you got, and the year, and it's like a, the format of, the, of this type of credential, so anyone, anyone can check it automatically. And also, well, as I was telling you, this deed registry, uh, this is uh, the most important, uh, the second most important part here, and is the decentralized identifier. It is a, a standard that is being developed by W3C and many other uh, companies uh, and institutions that are working for this uh, SSI technology. And this will be how you will be identified in this kind of platform. It's like a public key uh, with a specific format. Uh, and also something interesting is the credential revocation. For example, uh, you will be able to revoke uh, a credential that you issued in the past if you want. For example, uh, I don't know if you are the government that you issued a driver's license for me and then uh, I committed, uh, I was driving drunk and the government can say, well, this credential that I, I have issued in the past is now uh, revoked. Uh, and that is also published in the blockchain. Um, these revocations. So this is about the, the, the public stuff here, what, what everyone can see. Uh, and then we move to the private uh, part uh, that only uh, the identity owner can view uh, and share with its private key. So the identity owner will have a mobile app uh, with, with which he will uh, that will be the app that I was showing to you, and that's where he will uh, be managing this SSI identity platform, his own SSI. Uh, he will have a private seed key for the app that will uh, derivate in many other private keys that will be used for the app, for example, for the crypto assets like the Pesos token. It also will have a decryption key and a did private key for this decentralized identifier to 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 know who you are, and and also it will hold all the credentials uh, there in your app. Another interesting thing is that all your credentials will be backed up in cloud servers. Uh, but it's important to say that you will be it, it will be in this cloud server, but you will be the only one that can do. Uh, things with it because they will be encrypted and locked with your private key uh, and no one can see that information and no one can move it or delete it and you will be the only one that, that will be able to, to manipulate it uh, regardless that is in a, in a server anywhere. So you got this privacy uh, uh, characteristic for you. Um, and it's important this cloud backup because uh, 
many people that have Android device doesn't have many space in their devices uh, or storage uh, in their devices. Um, and if you have this cloud backup, you can save all your information there with no risk that will be taken by anyone. So, well, this, this is more or less uh, a perspective of this SSI technology. I don't know if you understand about it or not, or if I explain it okay, but then you can ask more about it. And so, okay. So why, why we are here, uh, or why, are, why I am talking here? Uh, with blockchain and mentoring. I think it's blockchain and innovation mentoring lab. Uh, okay. Am I right? <laughs> um, so I, I was introduced uh, to Laura uh, by, by Alex Prevshak. Uh, that's uh, somebody that is working hard in blockchain technology for a long time there in Spain. Um, he told me that Laura was uh, managing this, this lab and there was like a possibility to have a, a volunteer developers uh, that are interested in blockchain and decentralized technology. So, uh, well, I met her and we talked about it and this proposal and it was great. I loved the, this program and, and well, I knew Rafa, I think he's there. Uh, yes. And he, he joined our project as a volunteer developer here at Didi. Uh, I can say he's the one of the first that is uh, uh, throwing lines of code for our project. Uh, so, well, uh, I would like him to introduce himself and tell you about uh, what he's doing with us, if you think that's okay. Yeah, yes. sure. <laughs> okay. Welcome. So, Welcome, Rafa. <laughs> so, hello everyone. Uh, my name is Rafael. I'm here thanks to Laura. And I am Milton, Milton's <coughs> mentee. Um, I will tell you a little bit about myself quickly. Uh, I come from Uruguay. Uh, I am a software engineering engineer and um, I have been working in software development for seven years now. I have focused on web uh, development and mobile applications too. And I moved here uh, to Europe um, about two years ago. I mean, I was in Berlin as a freelancer. And then I came here also as a freelancer. I had the chance to meet Hyperloop Transportation Technologies. And uh, I started working for them. There I met Laura. And there she, after some months, she, she proposed me working for this uh, mentoring program and of course I, I I said I wanted to do to do so. Um, and thank you Laura for that. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> and uh, what else? I mean we had our conversations about blockchain. I mean I, I could share some also some knowledge there in Hyperloop um, which was my final motivation like to, I, I I started feeling what the blockchain API was how how it worked. I mean I, I had and the chance to work with blockchain developers. And I thought, okay, this is the future. I mean, I want to learn about it. And when Laura told me about her mentoring program, I, I of course said yes. So um, what can I tell you? Why, why I, I am working with Didi? Um, to, um, <coughs> Laura presented me to Milton. Um, I mean, the, I think the project is amazing and it's, it's, it's related to help people who are in need. So, I mean, and, and that's, I think that's awesome. And Milton is very motivated with this. And also that motivates me. So it's like a, this, this thing setting up, which is it's cool. And I mean, I am very thankful to, work, to have met Milton, which is, which is, um, is, an, is my neighbor there back in, in Latin America. And also, I think we, we, I mean, Uruguay shares a lot of this reality about, about people in need. I mean, there's, there's this, these uh, people are in a very similar, they, 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 this, these places that Milton has, ha, have mentioned uh, exists also in Uruguay. So I, I mean, I think we share that a lot. And I mean, I hope this project grows enough so as to, I mean, get to Uruguay and help people there with, with, with their digital identities. Okay, um, what will I be doing here in Didi? As, 
No, I mean, getting this like a little bit more, more technical, I will, uh, my, the scope of my, my participation in DD is to learn right now about RSK, which is a smart contract network, and also U-Port, and as, as uh, Milton mentioned, is a self-sovereign identity platform. Uh, the idea is, is to build um, is to build an API uh, in Uport, uh, and so, so so a base for 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 the for, for what it needs, which is finally this, this digital identity. Um, and this uh, this will be done. Uh, we which we will try to do this for the end of July, uh, which is which is. Uh, for how long how, how we will be working with Milton is initially we, we, we have agreed to start to work until July and we hope hopefully we will finish this and build this API for a good basis of the digital entity. And I also as been narrowing down and, and giving more, more detail what I have been doing is uh, technically speaking, I have been installing for example an RSK node. I also have also got into the creation of some basic um, smart contracts. And um, also I have created an ERC20 token contract. Um, so now the next steps will be investigating Uport, which um, as I have mentioned, uh, the idea is to build the API on, on this Uport. So, so I, will be, I will be very soon continuing with Uport. And to wrap up, to finish a little bit, what my expectations about the program is, is of course, to learn and also to collaborate with, with, with the situation that the, the people are living in, in Argentina and, and also in Uruguay, in, in, in lots of places in Latin America, and help as much as I can with this. And I mean, keep try to keep decentralizing uh, the governance as much as we can. So. I, that's it with me. I, I just want to add uh, two things about uh, the um, profile of the mentee that attend the mentoring program. Um, everyone has uh, a full-time job. So he has a full-time job, which means to me that uh, if the project that they are working with is not interesting and that doesn't add the value, uh, you wouldn't... Uh, uh, like spend your time. <laughs> totally, totally. It's, it's, it's being a big yeah. effort. And, and plus the second thing uh, um, that it's important to highlight, uh, the profile of the mentee. It's something, um, something like, uh, so no one that uh, uh, doesn't want to work over time or doesn't want to learn can attend the mentoring program because of course uh, um, it takes uh, quite some time. So how many hours do you spend a week? Um, I'm only getting five, five hours. Okay, fine. We have also other mentees that it depend even by the, the workload, they spend uh, even more. So it's something that say um, about the, the profile of the, the people that are people that want to learn and people that, uh, um, I mean, uh, they are ready to also the next step of their career or bring uh, added value in the company where they're, they're working. Uh, last thing that I want to add about uh, Bitcoin Argentina, I was sure I didn't know Bitcoin Argentina was introduced as uh, um, Milton said um, by by Alex that uh, is uh, one of the person more connected in uh, in uh, Spain in the blockchain ecosystem that I know at least, um, and I was surprised because their their NGO works better than uh, a company. They are super structured, and uh, they ask him uh, to to sign a contract also for yes, a volunteer yes. position and for a short uh, limited uh, period of time. So um, there are many realities that, that are outside uh, uh, the normal uh, um, organization where they work really hard and where you can uh, uh, you can learn more of in than in other uh, context, I believe. All right. Thank you, Laura. You're welcome. <laughs> All right. So I guess we'll open it up to uh, Q and A now. Uh, I have a. I have a. I have a. Well, I was gonna. All right. I was gonna take the first question, but go ahead. <laughs> well, no. Uh, yeah. 
Is there any sort of government involvement in this? Do they recognise it, and would they recognise the, the the people's credentials for or financial institutions? Would they recognise this uh, project, you know, as on an individual's basis? Better to ask, do you have a bank license to work to operate? Uh, did you hear that? Did you hear the question? Yeah. Yes, if uh, I think I heard it, it was yeah, like okay. uh, if the governments or financial institutions will use uh, this uh, app or platform to yeah, to recognize record. even recognize it because you I don't know if you're like an individual um, startup as it were that wants to bring this to the people, but is it mm -hmm. recognized by any? Well, yes, that's that's a really important part of the project. We are uh, we are making like contact, or we have been making, and the people that started with the project two or three years ago uh, have been making a lot of contact with uh, this financial institution and with government institutions. Uh, we cannot say it right now, but we are really close to to well, to to have an agreement with a with a bank that will be uh, the custodian bank for the pesos. Uh, if we we get it. Uh, we will have there the, this one of those parts you are telling, you are asking about, and we think that many others will be, other banks will be interested when they they hear that this one is using it. Um, we have been talking and continue talking with government, uh, from city government, uh, national government, um, about this. They are interested in in blockchain technology and this kind of, of project uh, is not easy uh, to to get them on board but we are we are on that we are trying to do it we are not so close with uh, as we are with the bank but we we are talking with them and with many persons from government institutions they are interested also the the inter-american development bank uh, who we are work, working with it's a, a really prestigious institution and the government trusts in them. Uh, so that's uh, really important for us to, to, to get it done. Uh, so yes, uh, it would be great to have uh, at least uh, a government uh, in the project so they can issue credentials and read them because it would be a great first step. But uh, in the meantime, we, we will have many, we work uh, all with informal institutions such as the one that, that gives uh, informal credentials nowadays and also uh, there are many APIs, open APIs such as the one that does KYC in Argentina you, you can access this credential uh, paying a little bit uh, a li for, trans for transaction and you can get your identity fully verified and um, that will be in our, in our platform so you can show all your identity information without uh, having any conversation with with the government, uh, only accessing this API. So we have we will have that. Uh, but yes, it would be great to also have the, the government in itself uh, using it. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Um, you first. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Um, one thing is the, uh, the support from government, but when you launch your pilot, your MVP, how do you pretend or how can you, how, how can you try to attract cast of people yeah, to the application? Uh, good question. Uh, so our first MVP will be focused in this uh, town, the Barrio Padre Mujica. Um, one of uh, our team, uh, I have not talked much about the team, but uh, one of the of the coordinators of our team is a community coordinator. Uh, she is a, a person that uh, works uh, in the field. She is in the town. She knows the people, uh, and she one of her objectives is to reach out uh, like key key users for the app. Uh, she has been doing it and there are many people interested so we will start with these key users and they will be like promoters of the app internally uh, so the, we will have our, our first uh, testing uh, in field with real ca use cases um, 
and well then uh, we will try to expand it there with these promoters and our and our people that are uh, for a long time going to to this neighborhood and for our first stage then uh, for casual users to download it it will be like another stage this is a, lo a large uh, a long a large project it, it is it will last almost four years so we will have time for that um, and we will try to find the best strategy but our main objective right now is uh, for this uh, specific population to start using it and then we will move to the other one thanks thank you Maybe my question here is like, uh, uh, at least in Latin America, there was seven different projects in the past that even raised big ICOs, like 80 millions, like, you know, millions of dollars, promising to do exactly this. <laughs> and we know Moneda in Brazil, we know like, you know, different stories of like, you know, microfinance, identity, like identity of soil, identity of like, you know, we see so many and like I'm talking about like money they had enough money to make it three times <laughs> and and yeah. like four years has been saying those things so may, maybe if you could like you know get a little traction why, why it didn't happen before and why it should happen now uh, that's a great 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 question sorry I'm from Brazil I know Moneda from you know the details behind it and even the programmers that were in the project like you know last year and what, what happened they are working on something i, I don't and know last time they heard that they were doing like gaming for kids to attract people to the platform gaming gaming oh okay so they are using yeah, the money for another thing to come to the platform it's like gamification with game okay okay interesting <laughs> No, no, no. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, sorry to be so harsh. It's just that. Uh, no, no, no. It's a, it's a great question because uh, this has been tried to be done before blockchain technology, uh, and it was really difficult um, to differentiate from those projects. We are not an ICO. We we are not raising this uh, money in that way. We we partnered with uh, well, with. A D B bank, as I told you, and with some technological partners such as Accenture and RSK, they, they all found our project. Um, and we are looking mo for more donors. They, they are, these founders are donors, uh, so we, we are not doing... This is another type of project. And also, it, it's an open project. We, we don't look for profit. Uh, we would like it to be tested. We would like it to be done. We, we have the connection. Another important different, uh, differentiation uh, is that we have uh, people uh, here in the NGO that works uh, together with the people in the, in the neighborhood. And, and, and they are really eager to test the solution. Um, and we think uh, we have that chance, that, that chance that the this uh, formal institution and, and the neighborhood are, are interested and the uh, Inter-American Development Bank is also one of their most uh, important projects. Uh, so we think we have this, uh, we, we make the difference uh, by knowing the people that, to whom we, we will uh, reach with the app and the platform. Uh, honestly, we don't know if we will uh, succeed or no, but we we are confident that we will do it. Uh, but the the time will tell. All right. Any other? Okay. Uh, technical question. I'm not really used to RSK, RSK, but if you're using Ethereum, why you are using RSK? Or maybe the question has no sense. No, no, it's a good question. Um, our project, uh, it is really, it's, uh, it, it, born, it was born uh, with an openness, uh, like everything is open, everything, uh, everyone will be welcome in, in our platform. Um, so there, there will be the possibility that this token peso would be uh, held by one custodian bank uh, that may like to use RSK, but maybe another custodian entity would like to use Ethereum because they trust more in that chain. 
uh, or maybe in the future EOS. We don't we don't know. Uh, as it will be open, uh, uh, these entities will decide in which platform will they use. But obviously, we will our MVP will will be working in one, and we 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 will do it. Uh, probably, we are trying to to finish these details. Uh, we will use uh, RSK for our first MVP uh, and not Ethereum uh, for a start. Um, we will be using them because uh, we think it's it's a robust uh, blockchain and it's also compatible with Ethereum and Solidity virtual machine, uh, which is, I know it is the most important right now here, a great community when you talk about uh, developers of smart contracts so uh, we 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 like uh, that possibility and also well uh, RSK has this uh, layer uh, up upper from the bitcoin layer that we think it's it's one of the most powerful blockchains around um, so if if we work with RSK we would be fully compatible with ethereum in the future uh, but to answer your question, we will be starting with RSK and then maybe add any other blockchains. Thanks. I don't know if, if it was clear. Yeah, more or less. Okay. Okay. <laughs> we had a question yeah. in the back also. <laughs> yeah. So, inter solution interoperable with other IP solutions? What I mean is, for example, the certificates that you can check in TV can be verified on another platform, or can you verify other certificates? I, I, I have not hear it very well. Can you repeat, Jeff? Or? If. Okay, okay, we're going to repeat it. <laughs> Hi, Milton. So my, my question is about interoperability between your solution and other similar solutions. So are certificates, the, the certificates that you issue in your platform, can, can you verify them or check them in other platforms? Or, and similarly, can you verify other certificates that were not issued in Didi? Or what's the plan about that? The plan is that is to go in that way. Yes. Uh, obviously, the MVP will be uh, a little bit close because uh, we will need to do tests without depending on on anyone. We will have to move on with that. But uh, yes, the the main objective of the project is, is to to have. Uh, this is the vision of the project. What you were saying that somebody can uh, reach our platform uh, we will give the sdk for everyone it will be fully documented and every, everyone will be able to verify credentials that have been issued in our platform uh, and vice versa um, we really like to to meet these ssi standards in order to reduce the, the problems uh, and to improve the interoperability if we are uh, we follow this kind of standards in which we, we trust, uh, it would be easier uh, than if we would uh, issue or, or create our, our own standard that is different from the rest of the world. So our, our intention is to go uh, through that way. So, so in, the, in, in theory, correct me if I'm wrong, um, the, the, the standard of the same, but the methods are different. So in your case, you are using Uport, that is a specific method that brings also a specific uh, governance. Yes, yes. Uh, the standards will be really similar between this platform or different blockchains that use S SI. Um, but uh, it will be easier if you, regardless if you use Ethereum, RSK, or Sovereign blockchain or or Alastria, they are in Spain. If we all use SSI, it will be, it will be really uh, easy to join uh, this, or to interoperate with, between these platforms. Okay, is that? If your project will fail, why? Why what? Why, why, why? 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 Why would the project fail? No, yes. in case it will fail. Yeah. The project it, fails, why? just imagine. What is the reason? Yeah, if the project would fail, what would be the number one reason? What's, yes. what's the biggest challenges? Oh, uh, there are many, 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 many. <laughs> because 
it's uh, all new technology. There is much theory about, about all of this that I have been talking uh, more uh, about this uh, SSI technology. Uh, there is not much that has been tested uh, nowadays. Uh, more uh, maybe the, the token part, it has been tested since 2009 and then with the ICOs with Ethereum, uh, that part maybe uh, the technology we won't have problems, but uh, maybe this SSI part uh, is it's really, I, I don't know, I'm, I'm really uh, happy to work with this because we will be like one of the, the first to do this, uh, the, to follow this standard, but it has an uncertainties, the technology. And also, as somebody was asking, always user adoption, it's important. Uh, we are confident that uh, the towns here that we know uh, the, the user will be interested, but we will have to work hard to, to make it work in, in other places. So the user adoption, adoption is difficult also. And, and well, and another thing is uh, this, uh, the connections with these stakeholders. We will need the stakeholders to work with our platform. It will, will be one of the most important things to get a real adoption of the of the app. We have this the, we are the, we have the, this this difference from our platforms that you will be able to to work with it without any formal institution. But we think it, it won't be enough. We will need that uh, other important institutions to work with us, and we are working on that. But it's. It's another important thing that we make, will make the success of the project. Okay. Another one? Yeah. Um, I would like to know what's the funding um, you've had so far and what's the cost of the total project? Um, the to I'm not with that part, but I can tell you that the total project uh, is about uh, $2.5 million, but it, this money includes uh, these training courses, the, the papers that will be made, includes uh, our team, uh, includes a, a lot, um, and a specific part is for only development. So uh, that's that's what I can tell you about. Okay. okay. So we gather much less money than the, this Brazilian project that uh, the lady was talking about. <laughs> okay, another one. I'm oh, sorry. Uh, yeah. uh, if I'm not wrong, uh, you said that uh, these people who live in this neighborhood uh, don't have any account, a uh, digital bank account, or anything. So how do you, how do you upload the money they earn this platform to spend it? And then if they can't upload it, uh, how they can spend it? I mean, they. They can, but they can change it. Okay, uh, I think the question I is: the, yeah, the, uh, the, the How target. do people without bank will put money in your application? Okay. Yes. Uh, so there, there are like if you guys uh, are issuing like credit cards to spend the money or apps to spend the money. Okay. There are these uh, called here extra banking networks. Are like, they are like kiosks that receive cash uh, for you to uh, pay for digital services when you don't have a, like a bank account. You can pay for uh, bills, uh, any bills, or you can charge your cell phone credit, or you can pay for uh, for many many services. You also can buy Bitcoin here in Argentina. Uh, using these these kiosks that uh, extra banking network that receive cash and they put this cash in the financial system um, or, or, or these kind of entities. So we will use these kiosks that are also in the in the town. Um, many of them they work there uh, and they have like less requirements. The barriers are really low uh, to have this cash in. We we have also. Now we, we are talking with our legal advisors to know which is the minimum uh, documentation they need to do cash in and cash out. Uh, I cannot tell you uh, uh, about that because uh, I'm, not, I'm not sure specifically, but the barriers are really low. 
and and well, uh, this this we are talking with this kind of uh, systems, uh, extra banking networks that will join our system and receive the money and and do the emission of the of the token when the money is received. Then when the money is cashed out, the token will be burned, and well, the, it will. Uh, they will mm, work as intermediaries with the custodian entity that may be uh, a bank and, and that will have the, the physical money in the end. Okay. Any more questions? Okay, another one? <laughs> just another one for me. <laughs> um, just maybe it's a silly question, but have you? Have you studied to use some kind of uh, decentralized file system instead of just cloud? Decentralized what? A decentralized file system. IPFS Bio. for the... Sorry, sorry. yeah. Yeah, a, de a decentralized file system. Have you think of using it? If you have a study possibility to use it or... De sorry, I, I don't understand, decentralized... Yeah. Instead of, uh, instead of storage in the cloud, uh, a decentralized file storage ah, system. Ah, okay, file system, sorry. <laughs> I could not hear that part. Yes, uh, we will, we, our intention is to work with IPFS. Uh, we would love to, to use it. Uh, as we have not studied that part, uh, it is about to be decided. But yes, our main goal would be to have it in a decentralized file system, yes, such as IPFS. Uh, so yes, you, you you won't need any central company uh, to use your, the platform. But for our MVP, it's not core. We think that you could have all the benefits uh, with a centralized uh, server. Uh, but yes, our vision is to have a, a decentralized one, so so we can be fully decentralized solution. Okay. Okay. Uh, just know uh, it's not a security issue. I'm completely ignorant of it, so. No, no, it's, uh, it's that uh, we will have to find the, the way to, to develop the solution and the MVP as, as quicker as possible. And we will have to talk about it to know if, if we can move quick with IPFS or, or not. Okay, thanks. Thank you. All right, I think that's, I think that's it. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you.